the many indications in the historical record that Frankfurter was surprised by the brief that was filed by the government um, and was taken by surprise and, uh, and relief when he saw in the government's brief in the first Brown case, in the first brief in the first Brown case, when Frankfurter sees the brief and he sees that the government takes the position that if the court should find that, um, that Plessy should be overruled, it does not have to grant immediate relief to the plaintiffs in the Brown cases because the plaintiff's briefs in all of the Brown cases all argued that those um, plaintiffs should be entitled to attend integrated schools and should be admitted to the white schools, yeah. right? And gradualism was anathema to the uh, and, uh, and black, uh, black community. I think that's correct. I think that it is, it is um, except for quote unquote incidental delays or necessary delays, uh, the idea that a constitutional right should not be um, should not be linked to a remedy for the plaintiffs asserting the violation of the constitutional right, right. was <coughs> contrary to understood law at that Got point. Yep. Right. So what Phil told me was that he did not talk to Frankfurter about this because he was sure he was going to be disabused by Frankfurter of the possibility of using that as an approach. Right. Because it might be suitable for large mergers and large antitrust cases uh, to gradually unwind a merger. But, uh, and there's a book um, called Law's Conscience, I think, by a man named Hoffer, who, who sort of talks at length about this, about this issue. Yeah. But I think that what Phil did in the first brief in Brown, as he saw it, and as I think as others should see it, was unprincipled. Um, and yet, in a certain way, brilliant, because it did indeed um, break a logjam on the court. Now, if you ask the question, why was there a, a logjam on the court, it gets to the heart of the controversy, because um, from Phil's perspective, sitting in the SG's office at the time he sat there, um, the NAACP was bringing these cases at a time when the chief justice of the court was Vincent, who was a segregationist. And he was bringing, and, and they were bringing the case at a time when there were other votes on the court, certainly, to uphold Plessy. Um, so Reed, for example. I mean, there were clear votes to uphold Plessy, and they were bringing the vote, uh, the, the cases at a time when there were, were justices, as Phil knew, at least as well as anybody, po possibly better than anybody, although that's also an interesting question as to who else knew who, who could read these votes. I think it wasn't totally a mystery as to who would read the votes. But he was, they were bringing the cases at a time when, from Frankfurter's description, there were possibly only four votes counting Frankfurter to reverse Plessy. The view was, at least, at least from Phil's perspective, Frankfurter felt that Jackson wanted very much to leave it to Congress, um, and that, um, and the number of sure votes was actually not very. Um, you had um, Black, Douglas, and Burton for overruling Plessy, from Frankfurter's count. You had Reed, Clark, and Vinson, who were probably for upholding. And you had um, that left Jackson, Frankfurter, and Mitten as the middle votes. So from Phil Elman's point of view, the question was, how do you, how do you get those three votes, Frankfurter, Jackson, and Mitten, how do you make sure that they vote to overrule Plessy? And the problem from the point of view of the justices, uh, the, the point of view of Frankfurter was uh, that the plaintiffs in the cases only wanted immediate relief and that the, um, even among those who favored reversing um, uh, Plessy, people like Hugo Black 
were convinced that there would be um, major turmoil in the South and were torn about this themselves, even though they would have voted to reverse Plessy. So from which is what happened. Which is subsequently close to what happened. Yeah. Right. So from from Bill's point of view, um, inserting in the government brief a um, a possible remedy which involved gradualism was the approach that would carry the day. Okay. Frankfurter was searching for a unanimous court. Right. Right. Now. Um, even if you wanted a majority, um, and this is confirmed, there's a letter that I've seen in the record uh, from Philip Elman to Paul Freund at Harvard, uh, sharing the brief and explaining that he feared the outcome in Brown um, might be to uphold Plessy or it might well be a split decision which would have the effect of, um, um, or which might have, as he I think the language was a sop to the egalitarians because right. Frankfurter considered right. Black and Douglas the egalitarians right. and it would be a sop to them yeah. to actually include language uh, which undermined Plessy. But, but that was his fear and that was the first brief. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, Log on to mslaw.edu.